It's New Brew Thursday! Woo! And we're at Thirsty, we're back at Thirsty Bear, which I'm very excited about because we haven't been here since April of last year. Yep. Almost a year. Yeah, it's wow. been a long time. We're so. in the uh, inner bowels of Yeah, Thirsty seriously. Bear. We're, we were going to shoot in the brewery and then Even we not realized. the bowels, the, the innards. The innards, the yeah, weird. That, yeah, that's weird. Watch your language, speak your guests. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, we were going to shoot in the brewery, but it was so loud in there. We were like, hey, these kegs look really cool. Let's stand in front of them. And so that's what we're doing. We're standing in front of kegs. And we have a very special guest that I'm very excited for. Julia Hertz, you are the spokesman for the Brewers Association. And Spokesperson, one of them. One there's of them, yeah, of there's several yeah. of you. And what else do you do for them? Uh, my title is Craft Beer Program Director, okay. and I'm also acting publisher of craftbeer.com. Oh. I uh, do a lot of education on uh, craft beer, craft beer and food pairings, craft brewers. I'd be great to yeah, Craftbeer.com is one of the best websites on the planet right now. Do we have you to thank so for stuff. putting our video up there? Yeah, well, that was uh, early on. Megan's story, our web editor, yeah. was right, white on rice, Megan. She was all over that. <laughs> yeah, it was, so it was awesome, but awesome. advocate. For that was so sure. amazing. I was like, oh my God, we got so much traffic off of that. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. That was beautiful. It was, so, it was kind of an honor to be on craftbeer.com. Totally. Yeah, like, seriously. Awesome. I, I remember texting John, I'm like, oh my God, dude, go to this link right now. I'm like, do it. <laughs> so Before it disappears. <laughs> oh, it's a great video. <laughs> Before they stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're here at the CBC. Uh, we've been talking about it. You're probably going to get like four or five episodes that are just all CBC related because we're so excited about it. We're all in the lobby CBC of the Hilton. Is, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> CBC, exactly. CBC is the Craft Brewers Conference. Yes, yes thank you. Know just briefly for the audience, just kind of give like what the, the BAs, uh, ver like what their um, goal? goal. Yeah, exactly. Their goal and what they... What, what the Craft Brewers Conference is really about. Sure, I mean, this is the annual conference that we put on and the pretty much the universe, the beer universe tips the scales to whatever we're city in, whatever city we're in because they all attend. And last year was 2,800 people and this year's 3,900 people and we plan for growth and we still sold out. And I mean, it's over 50 educational sessions. It's also an expo with those 200 exhibitors, and it's also networking. I mean, and craft beer is, is not just amazing uh, for beer lovers today, but it's big business. And these guys and gals are looking for, you know, looking for ingredients, looking for new brewery parts and, and tanks and the like. So a lot of networking, a lot of buying of things going on, and just just once a year. It, it, it's a, it's almost. I don't want to call it quiet, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a focused educational time compared to say Great American Beer yeah, Festival. Right, where it's all about drinking beer. Right. Well, which we also <laughs> put on, and it, yeah, it's just a different environment. The guys right. are here and girls are here now to just um, network with each other and learn and and get inspired. One of the things I've noticed, I think, above and beyond the things you get from the Craft Brewers Conference, like the expo and the sessions where people are speaking and whatnot, is. It's a really good opportunity for brewers to come together and talk to each other. Yeah. You know, from other, you know, there, people from literally each coast can come together and speak about what they're doing, problems they're having, successes that they're having, you know, things like that. Um, I think it's just a really cool aspect of it. I think that's probably the main aspect of the Craft Brewers Conference, everyone coming together and talking about things. Yeah, it's a huge observation. Two specific examples from today were the Pink Boots Society, who has Barney's Angels now, to right. um, Terry Farendorf and, and all the help she's getting. They had a focus session. I attended it, and it was 70-some-odd women you know, across the brewing industry in all spectrums, from the lab, from the brew house, from the accounting side of it. And that, for them to get together and kind of caucus with each other and, and talk was incredible. And then I also attended the state guilds meeting, which there's 30 some odd guilds in the U.S. when it was open forum where they were able to, you know, sound out challenges they were each having in their individual states. And through everybody's experience, they could help each other problem solve. That's and cool. so, yeah. That's it's, so cool, yeah. It's exactly it. It's a, it's a great observation. And was that had that happened last year mm -hmm. yeah and it's just well, has pink, it grown so much more pink or? boots um side of it definitely grew that their meetings traditionally been off-site and uh it's been exciting to see them getting rolled into our actual format and uh you know that organization's yeah. going nowhere but up i keep hearing about women in beer it seems to find me organically as i am exactly. this little lady amidst you guys <laughs> because i'm a, right. a you know a woman in beer but it's um it's finding them as well and so i think this group is the is the right thing at the right time one of the things that I want to talk about in this episode specifically, because you are very social media conscious, you're, you have a very active role in social media, especially for the Brewers Association, 
is how do you feel that social media, because it's such a huge growth now in the craft beer world on social media, how do you think that's impacted the industry itself? Well, great question, and I feel like I'm preaching to the choir and anything I answer because you guys are so prolific, and I mean, I admire traffic numbers you're sharing with me for the show. Like, knock my socks off. Like, that's incredible. Yeah. Thank you. What you guys are doing. And, got tingles. I mean, it, it, it's awesome, and 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 back at you know citizen bloggers onto consumer media when they're publishing something on beer I bet you for those websites because we're seeing things in Wall Street Journal New York Times and the like Los Angeles Times they're seeing traffic to those pages because right. people are hungry for information on beer and craft right. beer so yeah it's I mean this is a 20 minute conversation from here but I, I kind of consider myself a scrappy little marketer I, I never professionally got trained for marketing but I was a broadcast journalism major and when I come to this world now as the bandwidth kind of gets wider. I'm so excited because I feel at home and I think the internet's going more towards video and your format of what you're doing. You guys are, you know, really smart in the way you're doing it. And I just have kind of pieced it together like the rest of us had and we're all learning together of how fast Facebook grows, how fast Twitter grows, but it without a doubt it's absolutely changed the industry of beer, which is a hundred and one billion dollar industry. Wow. How do you change a hundred and one right, billion exactly. dollar industry? You give it back to the people. Thank Crowdsource you. it, yeah. Thank yeah, you. and that's one of the things yeah. about social media that I don't think a lot of people or, you know, brewers understand, maybe you know, for the most part, is it's so easy. It's not hard to, to get your name out there with social media. You just have to be interactive with your fans. Right. You have to you have to monitor your Twitter feed, monitor what people are saying on Facebook. Um, you have to be involved in it. Involved and if good. you're just you know standing on the sidelines watching a feed, people are going to yeah. lose interest in you. But you right. have to be out there saying consistently you know, saying things. involved. Yeah. yeah, and it's. Don't look at it as a as a job necessarily. Like, oh, I gotta go on Twitter today and I gotta. Yeah, as soon as it that happens. It should be fun because there's people right. out there like us who are like, oh, I'm drinking. They're fanboys. A, yeah, I'm drinking a you know a thirsty bear, uh, whatever beer, and it's awesome and I love it. And if I own thirsty bear or whatever, I look at it and go, hey, that's well, cool. Yeah, and I'm, I respond and say, awesome, thanks for drinking my beer. You right. know. Well, I think that's rad. it's. I, I equate it to how we feel when we get an at reply from somebody that says. I'm catching up on back back episodes of Newbury Thursday, or I'm watching this week's Newbury Thursday while I drink a new beer I've never had before. And that's to me, I see that and I'm just like, it's so validating to be like, you get what we're trying to yeah. do. We're trying to introduce beer to people, and it's so cool to see that. And I think with social media, especially, you know, a year or two ago when Twitter was you know two or three years old, um, Twitter was following traditional media. You'd see things on traditional media, then you'd kind of see them on Twitter. Right. Now, traditional media Reversed. is following yeah. Twitter, you know, where it's yeah. like they're exactly. talking about what's happening on Twitter these days or yeah. what's happening on Facebook. And that's so insane, like, to think that this, this huge organization of people that they just shift the tide of what is talked about in the news and It'll what keep it, you honest, yeah exactly it? you know because you you, you can't just, make mistakes on Twitter. It's a more instantaneous dissemination of information. Right, exactly. And I, I think for the craft beer world, especially like beer releases and GABF and because I know like the year before I you know I went two years of GB, GABF year before good crowd whatever this year there were so many more Twitter people at GABF there was such a huge social media presence there you know and even now like a lot of our the fans of our show who aren't able to come to CBC are just they're excited to hear our Twitter feed about it like Oh, we're looking forward to living vicariously through your feed. And right. Twitter is just such a great way of being able to instantly share your experiences with people. And I, I really want to see a lot of the brewers are really like Dogfish Head has been fantastic. Stone's oh, yeah. doing a really good job. Yep. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of breweries out there that are making really good use of social media. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see them all start to, it, it, even if they can't use it for themselves, at least respect what it's doing for the industry. Oh, absolutely. And if they're not paying attention, they're going to lose out. I mean, another thing to, to maybe think back to as a great example of how it's helping the craft beer, beer industry is, like, who's heard of Rock Art Brewery out of Vermont? Oh, like, exactly. Yeah, seriously. I mean, they took on a huge billion-dollar corporation. And they won. Oh, yeah. And they won. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And they won because of Twitter. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, they won because awesome. of social media. Yeah. You know, it was like people crowdsourced that, and they just said, no, you are not allowed to do that. Going forward into the future, what... Give us maybe a little insight on what the Brewers Association is planning to kind of help. 
I mean, because the Brewer Association's main focus is helping the brewers of America to be successful and succeed in what they're doing. Correct. So give us a little bit of an idea of what we can expect to see from you guys going forward on that, if you can. Yeah, you know. no, I mean, well, it, it's with the continued and increasing, ever increasing interest, we have to remain focused, um, and it's one actual default or not good thing from the growth, is we have to be focused like a laser beam on doing what we do with excellence. And so adding new things on continually is, yeah. a, is a thing that we're very conscious of. We added Savor, an American craft beer and food experience in Which the last- Which is awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's the benchmark of beer and food pairing events, fourth year in June in DC. Oh my God, the mm -hmm. educational sessions are through the roof. The venue's amazing. Um, beer and food is going to be better than ever, and uh, you know it's a world-class event. So continuing with that is, uh, I think, a very good thing to do. Great American Beer Festival sells out, and it's a forty-nine thousand. Yeah, it sells event. out months before in the event, yeah, right? as I mean, it should. That's what yeah, exactly. It is awesome. So just what I think we, on the GABF side that there's talk of us doing is just continuing to have that be a focal point of education, wow. and you know beyond just the one ounce tasting, going more beer and food focused more educational sessions and the like. So trying to also have, you know, uh, companies there that reinforce that is, is, a, is a big focus. Definitely. Part of our mission isn't just American craft brewers and their craft beers, but it's the community of bre right. beer enthusiasts. Yeah. And that's a huge core to, to what we're about. And that's why, you know, I mean, brewers large and small are our members, and that's something important yeah. and, and definitely keeps me humble. You know, I, I think that there, you gotta. If you look at the overall industry, it, it is fragmented. There's different sectors within the segment of craft brewers. You've got brew pubs, a thousand of them, which are a very different group than you know microbreweries, yep. packaging only. And then you've got 80 or so you know regional craft brewers who are where, really where all the growth is from, at least on paper. But you know these nano breweries, 1,619 breweries in planning this year, more wow. than 200 than, it's than crazy. 2009. Yeah, it's crazy. And, it's, it's, it's crazy, and, and yet, so the interest and the enthusiasm goes back to the smallest of small breweries, too, and that's what keeps me so excited about it as well, is, is just the little guys are still affecting the, the whole overall right. picture. You're right. And I, it, it was very interesting during the keynote, they brought that up about how many yeah. breweries are starting, and I really liked the fact that he stopped for a moment and said, please remember that what has built this industry and what has made this industry successful is quality. Mm -hmm. Never forget the quality of the beer that you're making. Don't think that because yeah. this is a booming industry and it's growing and right. it's getting crazy that you can just make a beer that doesn't taste good or doesn't it doesn't have the same quality level and you're going to succeed. You don't you're want not. You, you don't want to ride on coattails of right. craft beer. You, you know? succeed because you're su you're making quality product and that's and that's what's really defined this whole this whole industry altogether. That's yeah. Paul Gatz, our director. I call him the Zen master of the craft <laughs> beer world. I mean, he gets it. He he's just great. He he was awesome too because I am so bored by statistics and whatever. Yeah, exactly. and, but I was yeah, so we interested. Did. Yeah, he I was, yeah, I was he so did. interested yeah. in what he was saying. Yeah. I was like, I couldn't wait for the next slide. I'm like, oh, what? Right. Tell me more. Well, he's into it as much as you guys. Like we're all into it. Like you can't hire people for our jobs that are like just right. like. Box, you know, put them in a box and tell them what to do. It doesn't work yeah. that way. And it stems from Charlie Papazian. And I mean, Charlie, I got my first homebrew book from Charlie, just yep, like the right. rest of you guys. Yep. And I mean, there's now this um, second generation and, and Charlie's still leading the charge. He's in daily for meetings. And I mean, we- yeah. I just we saw him on a panel today. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. accessible. He's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, he yeah. is cool. It's yeah. amazing. So, Julia, thank you so much for taking some time. I know you got a busy schedule this weekend. Great show. Uh, yeah, I and I'm very, I'm very so happy. Where's that the next beer? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're gonna party for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it, this was, stories. this was, yeah, exactly. Um, this was such a phenomenal episode. I'm very excited about this because I, I really think that social media and craft beer are gonna create something that the world has never really seen, and it's. I'm excited to be a part of that. I'm excited to see it grow, and I just, thank you so much for what the Brewers Association is doing, and. Um, I could gush all night long, well, you're, but I'm you're not going to. Well, you're born in my heart. Thank you guys so, very much. Cheers, Thank and as always, we're all going to have a good cry. And yes, exactly. <laughs> We're going to hug. Stay safe and drink beer. For sure.